There's overwhelming evidence that in the first century A.D., the original copies of God's Word of the Greek New Testament were written on small codices such as this. There is also evidence that this was the beginning of the modern book as we know it. Uh, the apostles were likely writing in all capitals, or uncials more properly, and with no spacing between words. So today let's explore the tools and techniques possibly used by our early church fathers. So the material that they would have written on uh, was papyrus. This is a papyrus from Egypt, and uh, it's beautiful. You can see through it and see all the, the weave of the, the different reeds that have been laid one over top of the other. Uh, 2 John chapter 1, verse 12 says, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. So the Greek word here for paper, he uses in the Greek is kartes, which means paper, which in those days was papyrus, which is where we get our word paper from. So paper comes from the word papyrus. The Apostle John also says in 3 John 1.13, I had many things to write, but I will not, with ink and pen, write unto thee. The Greek word John uses here for pen is the Greek word kalamos, which means read pen. So we learn from those two scriptures uh, what John was writing on and what John was writing with. So I made this read pen from a piece of river cane here. In South Carolina which I'm sure it would have been a little bit different in the Mediterranean but I think the principles are probably the same this one has a wider nib I'll use for wider strokes and up here I have um, different width strokes different widths of the nibs for different uh, widths of letters it seems the older manuscripts that are extant uh, the lettering style looks more like this. This is uh, work that I've done just in the last couple weeks with a very tiny nib and uh, it's very um, hastily produced it seems like at times so we got to remember these um, folks were hand copying letters written from the apostles and uh, this was for a lot of times they're on use so this is a more first century looking, as close as we can get, as far as I can tell. By the third and fourth centuries A.D., the, um, the Greek lettering uh, took more of a look like this. So um, the top line reads, In Arche Ain Al Logos. And so that in the Greek means, In the beginning, Arche was in all the Logos word. In the beginning was the word. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. The whole uh, text is there. So to show that in English, this is how it would look if we were reading this in that style with any no spaces and all in capitals. In the beginning was the word. So you can see, we can still read it. it. just makes it a little more challenging, but if we had to do this on a daily basis, I don't think it would be as much trouble as we perceive. So um, that's how it would look 
to the first century I if they were reading it in their language. In the beginning was the Word. The first step I use in this particular example here is I'll actually go ahead and rule the lines out uh, with a straight edge and I use the same amount of space in between the lines as I do of the height of the letters. And I do that because I do see evidence of that in the 3rd and 4th century manuscripts at times. I don't really see it on the ones from the 1st century. So um, also at the end I can erase those pencil lines as well, which I typically do. So this isn't a how-to video, it's more of an enjoyment. If you like, you can watch at your leisure. So I hope you enjoy it. Also, you may notice that I go back to the ink uh, and re-dip the pen, the reed pen, in the ink for every letter. And in some cases, like with the new that I just completed, uh, I may have to go back two times in the course of one letter to get it to look solid and dark. Most of the originals that I've seen, the letters are very dark, and um, some of them do show evidence of being lighter and darker, but uh, for the most part, they are very dark, and you almost have to re-dip uh, with this size and at this thickness of a stroke, one dip per letter. Epsilon Delta Omega. Sigma. Omnicron. Epsilon. So on the Greek letter nu, it's three strokes. On the second stroke, notice I twist my pen going down to make it thinner. That's the only way I found to do that. And then for the third stroke, I have to go back and re-up with my ink. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. Um, my typical day of work is letter forms or letters in some degree. I carve letters in stone mostly. Um, this is the type of work I enjoy doing. So if you like this type of material, please consider subscribing. And please feel free also to leave comments or questions below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video, Lord's willing.